I'm Stephanie Skinner from Culture Media, and welcome to Counterculture. Today, we are here to learn about Bayonne ham. In France, it's known as Jambon de Bayonne, but here we will call it Bayonne ham. Today, we have a very full lineup and an exciting drawing of a basket of Bayonne ham and paired cheeses and accompaniments for one lucky winner at the end. So stick around for that. Bayonne ham has only been in the United States since 2014, so this is a rare opportunity to discover this everyday cured ham from France. And today, we have four presenters, Stephanie Corlet, communications officer for Bayonne ham. Stephanie will tell us a little bit about the history and terroir of this iconic ham. She is in France, so we will have a video of her because it's the middle of the night for her. And then we will come back to the US and hear from Griselda Powell, head cheesemonger at Murray's Bleecker Street. Griselda will talk about selling and pairing the ham as a monger, just as you all are. Following Griselda, Alexia, Alexia Duran, brand ambassador for Bayonne Ham in the US, uh, will be, we'll be talking about tasting and how the uses both in France and here for the ham. And please make sure you have some ham left over at that point because you'll want to taste along with us. Following that, Chef Damien Sansonetti will share how he uses Bayonne ham in his Cheval restaurant in Portland, Maine. You should have received a package of ham, one of these. So that's what we're expecting you to taste today with us. Before we get started, I wanna mention a few housekeeping notes. This presentation should be in speaker view mode automatically, but if not, please put it in speaker view. There is a Q&A button on either the top or the side of your screen. Please post questions and comments there. I will be reviewing them as we go along and I will ask the presenters as appropriate. We will also have Q&A at the, at the end of the presentation, but if we don't get to your questions today or you simply wanna say something extra, we'll ask the presenters to respond directly to you afterward. You can also use the chat fun function, which I will also monitor. We really love your insight and participation. Ask questions, tell us your favorite pairings, a favorite recipe, whatever moves you. You can also find pairing suggestions and recipes on the Bayom Ham website. The contact information will be in this presentation and will also be included in our follow-up communication to you. Also, you will receive a questionnaire following this presentation. Please take a moment to complete it. We use those, the answers to, those, to that questionnaire uh, to refine everything that we do. So thank you in advance. So to start us off, here is Stephanie Corley speaking to us from France. Take it away. We have a silent video, apparently. Hello, everyone. I am Stéphanie Corallet, the communication officer of Bayern Ham Consortium based in France. I thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm excited for all of you to discover the uniqueness of Bayern Ham. I am currently working for the consortium of PGI Bayern Ham, which is a syndicate of producers established in 1991. Organized as an interprofessional body, it gathers every actor involved in the production of Bayern Hams, including 800 big farms, 38 livestock producers, 28 curing, two cutting plants, and 21 curing units, all located in the southwest of France. Let's start with the history of Bayern Ham and discover it by watching a short video. This is a certified Bayonne ham. It holds the secrets of a thousand years of honored traditional practices, terroir, and ancient ingredients. Long, Bayonne, Gers, the Andour Basin is a unique geography formed by a perfect union of sea and mountain. As Europe's original connection to the Iberian Peninsula, it's the pride of a region with a rich and storied history. This is why the Bayonne ham is the pride of our region.
Bayern ham is the only ham in Europe to be salted with a spring water salt, the salt of Salis de Béarn. This rock salt is obtained with an old method. It is scooped up with a pole skimmer as the water evaporates. Unlike the sea salt, this rock salt is completely free from pollution. Actually, this salt is naturally present in salt springs protected by the mountains, the Pyrenees in France. There are four things you need to know about the production of Bayern ham. Bayern ham is exclusively produced with pigs born and bred in the southwest of France and fed with corn. It's the unique ham in the world to be cured with rock salt from a spring water source located in the southwest of France. The exclusive salting and curing region called the Adou Basin is located between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pyrenees Mountains. Authenticity is guaranteed with a signature. The Basque cross is branded with hot iron on the sides of hams and is printed in black and red on labeling. Another important characteristic of Bayern ham is that it comes from protected geographical indication, which is a seal of guarantee and recognition. Let's discover it with the following video. At each and every step, each ingredient is carefully chosen for origin and quality. For a Bayonne ham to be certified PGI, every process and ingredient must be verified of its heritage and authenticity. PGI was created by the EU as a guarantee of quality and origin. These ancient techniques and traditional ingredients are still carefully practiced today. It's a labor of love and a duty to preserve the essence of a fabled origin. This is why the Bayonne ham is the pride of our region. Bayern ham is the result of a thousand years of tradition and know-how valuing and respecting the product in all its production process. There are eight steps to respect to create a good Bayern ham. Each one of these steps is essential to delivering a high quality product and Bayern ham has always been transparent on its process. The first step is the arrival of the legs. Step two, the salting. Fresh hams are rubbed with dry salt and placed in cold rooms. Step three and four, resting and drying. Hams are suspended in a room where they are dried at low temperature in artificially created winter conditions. Hams are then hung in drying rooms where the long maturing process begins gradually, enhancing their flavors, aromas, and tenderness. Step five, panage. The panage is a process of applying a mixture of pork fat and flour to the ham's muscular part making for a gentler drying process during the long maturing period. Step six, maturing. This step allows the ham to acquire all its qualities and reveal its personality, meat flavors, balanced saltiness, and delicate aromas. Step seven, sampling. Experts test ham and the taste at the end of a curing period. On average, it takes nine to 18 months to create a good bayon ham. Step eight, the marking of a Bayon seal is the ultimate step of a certification process for Bayon hats. I let you discover more with Bruxelles de Powell, Alexia Durand, and Chef Damien Sansonetti. Thank you, it was a pleasure to speak with you. Well, that was great. I'm ready to go to France. And now we are gonna come back to the United States and hear from Griselda Powell, head cheesemonger at Bleecker Street, Murray's and Alexia Durant. Take it away. <laughs> oh, hi there. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And thank you everyone. And thank you, Alexia, for inviting me to talk about Bayonne, which I really enjoy. Um, people ask me when I work at the cheese counter, and at the meat counter, what do you usually suggest to people? And one of the things I do suggest is Jean Bon de Bayon. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the reasons I love suggesting Bayon is that it is a beautiful cured ham. Um, and when I talk to customers, one of the things I think as mongers we do is that we first assess customers. 
And as during that assessment, I usually find three types of customers. Someone who is totally uh, unfamiliar with the whole notion of cured meats. The word charcuterie scares the living daylights out of them. Um, the second one, the second type of customer is the person who always comes asking for the same cured ham every time. And how can we expand that person's repertoire of cured hams? And the third one is the person who was over at the cheese side, they come over to the meat side and like, I got my cheese, what type of meat can I have with it? And I think Bayonne really meets the needs of those three types of customers. So let's start with the person who is totally afraid of the meat case. And the word charcuterie scares the living daylights out of them. Uh, when talking to them, I always try to relate something that they know with something that's in my case, particularly Bayon. And when I eat Bayon, it reminds me of fresh or baked ham. You know, the type that you have on Easter Sunday morning, if you're from the South. Um, there is a sweetness to Bayon, a little bit of nuttiness, herbaliness, um, moderately fatty. Um, and then sometimes I really get like notes of a stone fruit flavor. Uh, I love having that relationship with something they know, which is like a baked ham to this cured ham, Bayon. Um, because of the sweetness and the bit of saltiness, it does to me remind me of a Southern baked ham. And it's something in which a person's like, okay, I can relate to that. I'm willing to actually try this buy it, I'm not gonna be very intimidated by it. And it's so sort of like a great transition into both cured meats and cured hams in particular. The second customer is the person who comes in every time, I want a prosciutto. Uh, they are really, and that's really the only thing they know, either prosciutto de palma or uh, serrano. So my thing as a monger is let's expand your knowledge in cured hams and let's try something different. And one of the things I love doing is really comparing and contrasting uh, Bayonne with De Palma, Serrano, the other cured hams in my case. Um, what I love with Bayonne is that the difference in from De Palma is uh, a little less um, saltiness, um, and then I get a little bit more nuttiness compared to a parma, a de parma. While de parma can be a little bit tangy, woodsy, which is wonderful, there is a difference in looking at that comparison. Also, when you start thinking about Serrano, I find Serrano is a bit gamey, which is cool, but if you want something a little bit more milder, and again, sweet where you can really taste the meat, Bayon is the place to go. And <laughs> so, I mean, and that's, and that's the way I talk to my customers. Uh, and so that's why I love trying to expand a customer's background on the cured hands. And that's why I love talking to them about Bayon. Then there's the third person who's like, okay, you sold me all this cheese. You need to tell me what meat to go with it. And I look at them, okay, let's start with, again, Bayonne ham. Bayonne, I find because of its sweetness, its mellowness, its nuttiness, um, it really goes well with a lot of the cheeses that we have in our cheese cases. I think many of you are familiar with the notion, what grows together, goes together. And one of the favorite cheeses over at Bleecker Street is uh, Osarati Pyrenees Grabi, um, the Pyrenees cheeses. And we also have another cheese called Mistoa, which is a sheep and goat mix from the Pyrenees region. Uh, Bayonne really goes well with these particular cheeses. Um, but also there's the other thing that I always like to say is that opposites attract. And when I think about that, I'm thinking about what about a cheese that is going to be really strong, maybe have a little bit of sourness, something like a Sardinian cheese, like Bianco Sardo, that has a great deal of sharpness. Bayon, 
Bayon with like Bianca Sarda actually pulls a lot of that sharpness and it brings out the nuttiness in the cheese. Um, so Bayon, it is really like one of my go-to cure cams in my counter and also really one of my go-to meats it is really great. Um, I, I've been talking about pairing with cheeses, but I also want to spend a moment talking about other things I like to eat with Bayon. Um, when you have people who are looking for something quick and easy to snack on, um, we have like, and I'm sure a bunch of you have cheese sticks. Get yourself a little bit of Bayon, wrap it around the cheese stick, and it's a wonderful snack. Um, another thing that I love with Bayon is our pickled vegetables. We have this really cool pickled asparagus and I try it with other pickled vegetables. That and bayon is really wonderful. And what I really like about that combination is that the brininess that I have in the pickled vegetables with the bayon really enhance the fattiness in the bayon and it also brings out the earthy flavors in the bayon. Uh, so again, the, uh, the sum is, uh, is far greater than the parts with that combination. And the last one is a hot biscuit. I'm from the South, grew up in South Georgia, and nothing reminds me more of home and wonderful memories than a hot biscuit with some ham. Now, I am lazy. I am not going to bake a shank ham. But I will slice up some bayon, place it with a hot biscuit. It is just a wonderful memory. And I tell this story because, again, it goes back to familiarity for customers who are not familiar with pure hams. Uh, how do we get that connection with that customer in their mind? Um, bayon, I think it is a very, very versatile pure ham, a very, very versatile meat as a whole. And it is an excellent choice for your cheese uh, and meat platter um, or, or your boards. Uh, you place it on the board with any, with most cheeses, any accomp uh, accompaniments, it really works well. And I think the key strategy for a customer is that it's very accessible and which I think it will not you want to buy something in which you know everyone's going to eat. And I think Bayon is that thing. Uh, you don't want anything that's too exotic in which you know you have it sitting on your board after the party. That's not going to happen with this guy. I think it's very accessible and it is really a fun, fun cure now. And I enjoy it. And I really enjoy it because my friend Alexia introduced me to it. So I want you, I just want to introduce our brand ambassador, Alexia, and um, she's going to talk to you more, and then we're going to have some fun eating some meal. Yes. Alexia. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalba, and thank you, Stephanie, also, uh, to tell us a bit more about the specificities of the Bayern ham. Uh, so before the best part, which is obviously the tasting, <laughs> I'm going to introduce myself. So. As Griselda say, I'm an ambassador for one of the producers of the Bayern ham in the US. So I arrived in the US a couple of years ago with the mission to introduce the, the Bayern ham and its specificities to the American customers. And since 2014 and the arrival of the first Bayern ham in the USA, we are still continuously working on education and raising awareness, obviously, of, uh, of this uh, imported uh, cured meat and make it available to the largest uh, number of people uh, in this country. So uh, thank you all for being here today. I hope you are enjoying your time uh, with us. <laughs> so let's move on to the tasting part. So as Stephanie uh, already told you, you should have received the sample of uh, one of the four packages that she showed you. So you can open it grab a slice and put it in your mouth because us, we are going to do <laughs> the same thing here. Okay. Yes, this is really, really good. I think I really enjoy 
the nuttiness in here. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> you should. I think you, you should immediately talk, like taste the first aroma and flavor of the meat as soon as you have the bayonet in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to like we are curious to know what you are all thinking about like what are your first impression on the Bayern ham. So feel free to tell us what you think, and Stephanie will uh, let us know what are your first uh, impression. So you're telling me you feel like the nuttiness, and you also mentioned the like light saltiness of the Bayern ham. Yeah, I mean, and when I look at certain cured meats, mm -hmm. not just so like the Pacama and Serrano, but even American cured yes, ham, yes. Um, there is a, a significant mm -hmm. amount of saltiness. Yes. I love salt. Um, I don't, it's not as salty, exactly. but uh, therefore I can really taste the sweetness yeah. of this, uh, of the meat itself, yeah. which I think is really essential. I also like love the like the moderately a moderate amount of fatty. Yeah. It's not overly fatty, but it still has a richness to it. Exactly. So mm -hmm. this is exactly the first feedback and comments that we have uh, uh, from people that are uh, tasting the bio ham for the first time. Usually they say, oh, it's not very salty or fatty compared to other types of ham that you can find, for example. Uh, usually they also think it's a very soft texture. Mm -hmm. It's mild and delicate, uh, not like doesn't have like a powerful taste compared to some other types of cured meat, for example. And it's interesting because I think one of the first times we met when we were talking about it is this is one of those cured hams in which we can slice a little thicker yes, yes, yes. And, um, compared to the other hams. Exactly. And you can really, it is not overpowering yeah. when you have a thicker piece. Exactly. You know, in France, we eat it uh, a bit more thicker than yeah. <laughs> American restaurants. So maybe that's why, because it's not that salty. Yes. Yeah. Some other types of ham. Yeah. Uh, so also it has a very melting in the mouth mm -hmm. texture and silky texture. So yeah, this is how we usually describe uh, the taste and flavor of of, um, of the Bayern ham, it's also a little bit more darker, like more red color compared to prosciutto, mm -hmm. for example, which is more light pink. So feel free to give us what you what you think, what you think about the Bayern ham, your first impression. It's really important for us to know also what you think. So this is Stephanie. Yes. So one of the one of the things that is showing up over and over again is the silky quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the and the low salt, which I yeah, think yeah. is which is yeah. something, yeah, which makes it very parable too. Yeah, good. good and good. and sweet. Yes, everybody's saying definitely creamy, salty, so not salty. Yeah, yeah. lots of stuff. Yeah. Actually, silky. It's like I was not using that word before to describe the bayon hat, but so many people used it, so I was like, okay, yeah, I think silky. It's like the perfect. Uh, well, to describe the texture of uh, the bayon ham, so let me know that uh, everybody thinks uh, think the same thing. So I I, I hate to, so uh, there's lots of questions coming in. So if you don't mind, while well, while you guys are are trying to eat some ham, let me throw some questions at you. Um, can one of you just give us a little bit more details to what the term panage means? Okay, so the panage, it's actually the step where we apply a layer of uh, pork fat and flour on the meat part of the, of the ham. So it was shown like on the slide previously, and uh, it's actually going to help to, uh, so that slowing the drying process of the meat so it doesn't dry too fast and keep like a moist meat uh, inside. So that's what the panage is. I don't know if I answered. Okay. Yep. Um, so how long is, is Bayon? This is, here's the question I knew that was going to come. How long is it aged? So uh, usually in France, in order to be a PGI Bayon ham, it has to be cured for nine months minimum. It's like at least nine months. But uh, for the US market, when we started to import the first Bayern hams, it was, of course, nine months too, but we realized it was a bit too soft for the American customers. So we extended to 12 months. So every Bayern ham uh, you will find in the US market is cured for at least uh, 12 months because American customers prefer the drier meat. Yeah. So yeah, that's why. <laughs> And and what is is what is the breed of pig that is used? 
So uh, there is different uh, breed of pigs. So we have the large white, the Quetre, Landras, but the main uh, main breed of pigs that we use it's uh, Duroc. Duroc. Okay. Is it is it specified like you know with certain cheeses you have to use a certain type of cow? Uh, what do you mean? Is it in the is it in the PGI or the specifications of the PGI? You have to use a certain type of pig. Ah uh, no no no! I mean it's usually this one that I use because of the, um, the they are selected for the quality of the fat. But uh, no no no! You can choose every breed you want between those. Uh, this one. Okay, and, yeah. okay, um, and. Uh, uh, so the the way they test the uh, the the legs is it done the same way as it's as it's done with prosciutto with the with the bones? Mm, I I don't know how they do. There you go. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> yeah, no, they usually taste it to uh, how to say that to describe the flavor and the aroma of the meat, but uh, I'm not sure about the bone thing. So I don't okay. Know. Something okay. Wrong. Fabulous. Okay. So uh, let's see. Other some people are telling us things that they are trying that they're that they're uh, trying it with, and someone says that they tried it with a nice, a big, juicy Rioja. Are there other types of wines that you would recommend? Um, I don't know if Damien is maybe going to talk about that later. Um, me. <laughs> I would definitely recommend is to have, for example, a red wine, like a soft one, like Beaujolais or Languedoc, but something light that doesn't overcome like uh, the, uh, the taste of the ham, because as we said, it's have a mild and delicate flavor. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about you, Griselda? Would you recommend anything? Is there, are there any whites that you would recommend? Yeah. Uh, I don't drink. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well then we'll leave it to Damien. <laughs> so we're yeah. getting French rosé would be great. Yes, rosé for the summer it's perfect. Rosé and uh, my own ham, uh, you can go wrong with that. Here, I think this is a fascinating... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> There's so many people, you know, throwing stuff in. There's Honeycrisp Apple and Anju Pear. Um, yeah. So here's a question that I think is fascinating too, because this is such a, an old, not old, but this is, this is a, a traditional ham. Um, what would you typically feature on your cheese board at home in France with, with the Bayonne? Uh, me, as Griselda said, I think uh, also Irati or Petit Basque, she's coming from the southwest of France, from the Basque country, makes sense. Oh, uh, what did you say? What uh, wrote? Together. What grows together goes yes, together. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so, like so we've that. got a melon and avocado. Of course, melon yeah. and melon and bayon ham. That's a fam very famous combo in France, especially for summer. So yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I would actually like to, to ask a couple of questions about in-store handling, and then we're going to go over to Damien. But um, how long, so when you cut into a leg, you take whole legs, right? This is, yeah. So when you cut into a leg, how long do you keep them cut? Um, that is a good question. We really go through a leg, I mean, we really go through a lot of Bayonne ham at my store. So if I hold on to a leg for five or six days, that is, probably a uh, moderate to a long time. Uh, there are times in which I can go through a leg in two or three days. Wow. Okay. And um, best way to preserve the cut, the cut side of the, the leg in the store? Um, well, basically what we end up doing is it, um, at the, uh, during the day, we do keep it open. But again, um, we are processing through a lot of Bayon. Um, at night, we do wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as, you know, the very first customer comes in the morning, we unwrap it and we continue the cut. Um, so um, fortunately, well, fortunately, <laughs> I mean, we do go through a lot of Bayonne. So we never had, I never dealt with sort of like um, having Bayonne sort of sitting out for a long time. 
Okay. I will throw that over. What do you think, Alexia? Yeah, you see, I mean, the maximum amount of time you can keep it, it's like 40 days once you took it out of mm -hmm. the vacuum, uh, vacuum pack. But uh, yes, I think, I mean, main stores, customer, I would say one one week, it's the maximum amount of time they will yeah. keep the variant open before selling. Okay, and now we have a nerd question um, <laughs> from Brian Wazik. Um, so, uh, the panage rub with flour, does this make a concern, is there a concern for the gluten intolerant customers? So, uh, I didn't say that, but actually it's funny, in France, so we use, uh, uh wheat flour, so, and fat, fat, uh, pork fat for the panage, but because our product has to be gluten-free for the U.S. market, we use corn flour, so the hammer gluten-free, uh, Okay, um, can, can ba this is actually the next question is probably for Damien. So I'm gonna hold on to that question. It's, uh, so, um, I, so someone would like to have the name of the pig spelled, the name of the, the breed of the pig spelled, but I think that's all, unless you wanna do that live for all of us and we can judge your spelling bee abilities. <laughs> you want me to spell them? Sure. So the four breeds are large white, Large white L A R G E W H Y T E. So it's P I E T R A I N. Uh, Duroc, which is the most common breed that producers are using, it's D U R O C. Okay. And finally, Landrace. So it's L A N D R A C E. Landrace. Beautiful. Okay. For all those pig farmers out there. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about the U.S. market. And perfect. Because, um, yeah. So just to because I'm sure that you are all familiar with distributors, food service, or retail industry. So I'm going to be a bit more specific about that. So. Since uh, 2014 and the first arrival of uh, the Bayon Ham uh, in the US, we are seven uh, curing uh, companies that uh, are able to market the Bayon Ham uh, in, the, in the US. So you have the different uh, different uh, brands here. So we have Agour, Del Perra, Pierre Routesa, Maite, Fromi, Fromi, which is a, a distributor selling the Salaison de la Dour uh, by Anham, La Maison du Jambon, and um, D'Artagnan, which is an American uh, based uh, company importing the Bayon Ham from France. So you should have received, obviously, a sample uh, from uh, one of, uh, of the seven brands. Uh, so the Bayon Ham is present all over the US through many uh, distributors. So we are working with Chef's Warehouse, for example, Peterson. World Best Cheese, DPI, uh, Fromy, Marquis, and many, many more. So do not hesitate to ask us, to one of us, uh, or even after the seminar, like who are, our, who are our distributors? And we will gladly uh, answer to you. Uh, so working with uh, these distributors, it allows uh, us to be present among many retail stores in the country, such as Central Market in Texas, Murray's cheese <laughs> in New York City or Marquis, for example, uh, in, uh, in Florida. And we are also uh, working with the food uh, service industry. And you can find the Bayern Ham in many hotels or restaurants, like Damien's restaurant, for, for example, in Maine. Um, and also, I want to tell you a bit more about the main differences uh, between the Bayon, the Serrano, and the Prosciutto di Parma, because I'm sure you are obviously more familiar maybe with uh, these uh, other types of uh, imported uh, cured, uh, cured ham. So we can uh, differentiate the um, process, the taste, and the ingredients that, uh, that we used. So um, regarding the, the Bayon, uh, the process, uh, for the Bayern ham, as uh, Stephanie mentioned to you at the beginning of, uh, of the seminar, we have a very strict restriction on the breeding and the processing area southwest of France. The prosciutto di Parma is also very uh, restricted uh, in uh, the region, of course, of Parma in, uh, in Italy. 
whereas the Serrano, for example, uh, the porks only have to be processed uh, in Europe. So ham to be called the Serrano ham. Uh, regarding the ingredients, so the Bayonne ham, uh, as Stephanie told you, we use the spring salt from Salis de Béham to, uh, to salt our, our ham, whereas, for example, Serrano and Parma use uh, um, classic uh, sea salt. So that's also what's explaining the taste difference between these three uh, famous types uh, of ham. And uh, finally, regarding the curing, uh, the curing time, so Bayer ham for the US market, it's uh, 12 months at least. Uh, same as Parma, uh, whereas the Serrano, it's a little bit less longer, it's uh, seven months. Uh, regarding the texture, so we already covered that uh, and everything, but the Bayonne, I think it's very comparable and similar to the prosciutto di Parma, it's very soft. Whereas the Serrano, for example, it has been a bit more like fibrous texture, yeah. a bit drier, so yeah, that's the main differences between these uh, these types of uh, of ham and the saltiness too. But uh, we already talked about that. And uh, finally, the bayon is 100% natural, so it's only pork and uh, and salt, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, and the same for the prosciutto di Parma, whereas you can have uh, some preservatives in uh, in the serrano. So these are three different types of ham, all very uh, delicious. <laughs> and complementary also like to each other so good way to expand your knowledge about uh, imported uh, cured, uh, cured ham so i think that's it for me i covered uh, <laughs> some uh, more information regarding the, the bayon ham i'm going to handle it now to uh, damian of course who is going to tell you a bit more about how he's using the bayon ham in his restaurant and uh, how to pair it with uh, to... thank you Awesome. Thank you, uh, Alexia and Griselda. That was awesome. You guys should have your own little show to do <laughs> like, a, like, like a ham and cheese weekly show, you know, or something like that. But that was awesome. And thank you, Stephanie. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, hello from uh, Portland, Maine. Um, Damien Sansonetti, uh, co-owner of Cheval Restaurant here uh, with my wife. Um, and we use Bayonne ham a lot. Um, very familiar with it. Had it when I traveled into France and um, I love this ham a lot. I kind of, for me, I like to talk about Bayonne ham kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears kind of a style because it's kind of just right. You know, it's not too far one way over one side or another. It's perfectly right, right there in the middle with the texture, with the salinity, with that porcine flavor to it that really comes through on it. And it's a product that it's a ham that's enjoyable in its in its form, just as we're all enjoying it right now. But it's also got so much unique character to it that you can cook with it and do a lot of different things while you're cooking or putting it in certain recipes. And some things that there are already recipes that kind of exist for other um, dry cured hams or uh, fresh hams as well that you can swap in and out. I saw somebody on the uh, question thing was like, "Oh, I've made a uh, a ham and cheese sandwich." I, that's awesome. And like, if you go and make that ham and cheese sandwich with some of this ham that's here and bake it in your oven or your toaster oven and let it get crispy like bacon would, and you slap that on there too. Oh man, you're, you're, you're going to next level kind of like, it's your, it's your BLT. It's your Bayonne lettuce and, and tomato and cheese sandwich that you can make too then, you know, so there's all different kind of ways. And like, I have some of my Bayonne ham here, like laid out and I was trying to like, while everybody was snacking, I'm like, I don't want to mess up my plate to show everything off. Like you can just see too. I mean, you guys have it at home, but like how the layers of the fat is in there. And that's that beautiful texture. And I love this ham too, because it's also like the texture of it's, it's, it's more delicate and you can slice it a little thicker, like how Alexia was saying. And like when I was in France, I would get it first in my head, I was sliced a little thicker. And I'm like, oh man, something like I'm used to my hands being sliced really thin and all this stuff. But like, I still got it. And I was like, oh yes, please. I'll take another. Oh yes, I'll take another, please. <laughs> So, but it's like, it's, it's, it's because the texture and how it's salted and the timing it, it is, it is more delicate on your palate. And I think as um, when we're cooking with things, when we're looking for products we want to use, we want to find something that's maybe not we're used to as much or something new that we can introduce our guests to. And I know everybody has shops or they're running shops and things like that. So this is something new that you can introduce um, your guests to, or maybe give them different ideas to, to do things uh, with it. Like, we took, um, so here's a little, I'll do a little tilt down again. So this is just some beautiful uh, Jersey asparagus. Season just started uh, about a week and a half ago. We've been getting it. 
Um, and we just lightly peel them slightly, wrap the bayonne ham around them, cook them in the oven at 400 degrees for like 10 minutes, pop them out. And the hams, like it's crispy. And I just grate a little bit of Parmesan cheese over top of it. And these things are perfect little canapes, or you can make them into a salad with greens on there and pickles or, you know, part of a platter. So you're making it ahead of time. And, you know, everybody's making a party at home. You want to do something. You don't got to be fretting over or sweating over for a long time. And these are so good and they look so elegant and it's like, Ooh, fancy. And it's like, I mean, it's literally three ingredients, but they're all three quality ingredients and you have it and you have this ham and it's crispy. But when you cook it too, I love it. Cause it does bring out, like I'm a big fan of pork and I want to taste that pork. And you can really, really still taste so much that where sometimes other hams won't give you what this will give you. And that's the benefit of using this uh, Bayonne ham. And like another one that we have here, um, you know, you kind of got like devils on horseback. Well, we're kind of taking it a little bit further. And these are dates that are stuffed with um, New England cheddar cheese and then wrapped up with the Bayonne and, and cooked. So you get this and, and it's going to bring out a little bit more of that salinity in the ham, but still that porcine flavor and mixes with that luxuriousness, of the cheese and that sweetness of the date. So you're like, okay, yes. And you pop these in your mouth. Like you want to like, these are great with a beautiful glass of sparkling rosé, you know, or, you know, even like a nice bandol rosé. I'm, I like rosé. I'm a sucker for rosé. Um, or like a really nice Cru Beaujolais or um, what we really like to pair up because we do we do a lot of different hams here. We like to have different options, but what I love to pair with Bayonne ham is um, some Rancio wine from, um, from uh, France, which is kind of France's answer to uh, sherry. And it's an oxidative white wine and it brings out some of that unctuous porcine funkiness in the ham that it has while it's melting on your palate because it's so nice and rich and it pairs up so really well. And that's one of the things that we like to pair with it or some like white wines from the Jura. And I, I like oxidative white wines too and crisp white wines. And I love that because it will focus different aspects on the ham for you. Um, and it's just like, it's one of those products that I get excited about because I've used it for quite a long time and I got to try it in France and it's widely available here. Um, and we're happy to have it up here in Portland, Maine and have it be an ingredient into cook dishes and also in its beautiful, naked, unadorned form that's just scrumptious and delicious, you know? So it's one of those things that you can introduce to your guests um, or kind of get them to explore with it a little more because it is really versatile. It's super, super versatile. Our daughter loves it. She loves, like, she'll, like, I had to hide the packets like when we first got it. And, you know, I, I hid one of the packets because she found one. And I was like, oh, Poppy, what's this? I'm like, oh, honey, that's Bayonne ham, you know. I was like, okay. And I went back and there were like three slices missing on a thing. I was like, kiddo, where'd the ham go? <laughs> so it's like kids can love it. It's good for kids. It's all natural. Um, and it, it's just a great, great product. Um, and it's fun to use. It's fun to eat, you know. And it's, it's just, I feel like we're lucky to be able to have something like this here. Um, in the States for us to work with. You know? Damien, quick question from, from someone um, that I mentioned earlier. It, can, have you ever put Bayonne on a grill? And if you, if you had, do you have any suggestions? Um, like I have wrapped it, I have put it on top of things and let it kind of melt on something on the side of a grill. Like I kind of tried to make a little, uh, like go a little crazy kind of like a um like salt and boca style with something and i like grilled off like a steak and then i draped a slice or a couple actually a couple slices of ham on it and then just pulled it off it was a charcoal grill so i pulled it off to the side or if you had a, a gas grill put it on the low side or, a, or an off side and close the lid and then let that kind of just melt as a veil right over top of that and if you let it go and push it a little closer to the flame it'll start to get a little crispy for you and you let it rest for a, for a couple of minutes. It still will crisp up a little bit. So when you cut in there and you'll get more of that unctuous and the more of that salinity coming out of it as it cooks. And, that, and, and that's why it's fun because you can put this ham with different things and it, you, it, it really plays well and, and with all the other kids in the playground kind of, so, so to speak, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're coming up on asparagus se season. So I, I can see a lot of my my Bayonne go in that direction. Oh yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's great in the, in, I mean, in the, in the local, local asparagus we're getting here, like this from Jersey, we're gonna get our local season in, in Maine's gonna be about, eh, about a month more away. But I mean, 
honestly, I really like the stuff wrapped up or served with the beautiful white asparagus from France or Belgium. That's mm -hmm. it's yeah. harder to get here in the States. We do have a little pipeline that we get some in and we have used some. But like mm -hmm. if you can get your hands on the real like European white asparagus that are thick as like drumsticks. Yeah. Get it, eat it with <laughs> they own ham, get a nice glass of wine, whatever you like, it doesn't matter and enjoy because it's great. And I mean, it's even like classic, like grab some ham, get some nice butter, some radishes and a crusty baguette and a, and, a, and, a, and a nice knife and go and have a picnic by yourself or with your friends in the, like right now, because like it's gorgeous outside. That's just like one of those things, like it's just, it's so like perfect in its simplicity, but it has so many other uses to go with it out. Yep. So here's a suggestion to taking a brie um, and then wrapping it in the ham and putting it on the grill, which I think is an awesome idea. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so when you're, when you, do you get slices, Jamie, or do you actually get the, the whole leg? We, uh, we get the whole legs and we actually order it um, through D'Artagnan. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's great. And I mean, we will go through um, a whole ham in about two weeks or less depending mm -hmm. upon the, our, um, our frequency of things, just because our guests up here trust us with what we're doing and we love it and we like it. And we'll also incorporate into different things. And even when you start to get towards the cap end of it, we'll use that. And that's where you can kind of get um, more of like the cooking aspect out of it when you can't get your slices as sexy as much anymore. We're like, okay, you get that heart of it. And if you're slicing it, it's boneless. If you're slicing it in there, you're going to have that heel section of it. I mean, it's, it's so versatile up there. And there's also some more pieces. Like I really love slicing it and, and rendering out in an oven and having that and folding it into breads or folding it or like slicing them and putting them between two sheet trays and pressing them a little bit with parchment paper. And then you take it and you can crumble it up. And that's like your bacos on top of your salad and you get your salad a little fancy. And that, and that will store a couple of days in an airtight container with a little towel underneath of it. So you don't got to use it right away. You have a couple of days for it still to get to stay nice and crispy and really, really good. Um, or it makes a really killer vinaigrette after you do that too, because you can render it out in a pan with its own fat or crumble it and save some of that fat and make a little light vinaigrette or, you know, chop off some fresh herbs, a little good olive oil, splash of like a nice champagne vinegar or something in there. And you can pour that on top of some beautiful fish that you just bake, like some nice halibut that's in season right now, or a little bit of baked cod. And like, there's so much you can do with it that you can utilize everything for it, you know? So yeah, mm -hmm. cause I mean, we, we, we always try and use every single last thing of, of all of our products. I mean, when we're, we're cutting up the ham, we want to, we'll have different uses for it as, as we're going through it too. So it's super versatile. Damien, can you, can uh, Bayonne ham, and this is actually also for Griselda, um, can you slice Bayonne ham a little thicker than you would potentially a prosciutto or, or, or a serrano? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, what Alexia was saying earlier, like you do get it in France sliced a little thicker. And I, I think, I think in one of those packets, there is a ham that's sliced a little thicker. And I, I appreciate that because there was like, oh, somebody cut a little thicker because, it, because of how the texture is, it's not overtly salted. And that's where I think some people that like dry cured hams or dry cured meats may get turned off because the salinity is too much. This ham is definitely, and it's kind of like in a certain sense with, you know, finer French cuisine, there's a delicateness to it. There's a finesse that's involved with it. So but by cutting it thicker, you still can enjoy that texture almost completely different. Where here it's like silky and delicate, but then you have that and it's still delicate, but you can, you can kind of get your teeth into it and a little bit of that crocantness in a certain sense. Like, ooh, that's okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you were giving people goosebumps, just so you know. That's been... And Griselda, love... is that true for you too? Do you, can you slice a little bit thicker when you, when you sell? Uh, remember when I talked to you about hot biscuit? That's how I slice it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you really, like Damien was saying, you really want something a little bit of more bite into it. And that in between the nice hot biscuit, it is really, really good. Uh, and I've also trained a few customers to enjoy it a little bit thicker as opposed to something just so like transparent thin. Uh, I really think when you throw that transparency, route, you're really missing out on a lot of the, the texture aspect of it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. 
yeah, we actually did the same. We have a, we have a guest here that um, they really enjoyed all of our cured hams. And then he was like, I can only get Bayonne ham here. Like, I don't know where to buy it regularly. And I was like, well, I mean, I can slice them for you and, and you know, give you more to take home. This is pre COVID. Um, and he was like, can I just buy a whole leg from you? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay, we'll sell you a whole leg because he had bought a whole leg of other, of other hands before. So the, the man was not scared to cut into it. And he even asked me like, I'm not the best cutter. And I was like, you can cut it a little thicker. This is definitely kind of gives you a little more leeway for, you know, a little, I can get a little thicker. You don't got to worry about it too much. And he, he had a party with his family and they almost devoured more than half of the leg when his family came over. And he was like, I never thought it would be. And I was like, I kept cutting it and people were liking it more than the other hams. And I was like, okay, so we're going to have to come back and order another whole leg from you. We've sold him two whole legs of ham, just like a regular consumer. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Something interesting I like to say about the the form of the ham compared to the other hams. It's I'm not the best cutter as in prepping a ham once you get out of the packet. It is much more manageable to cut and to prep um, before you place it into your case compared to the other ones. That's one of the things I really like about it because it's much easier for me to manage that form factor of the ham. You were the first one yeah. to tell me that. <laughs> Unique customers, they tell me that like, compared to some other hats, it's mm -hmm. like easy to like trim or like take off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I nearly lost a leg of Serrano yesterday because it was so, it was hard to manage, yeah. but the, the, the Bayon, it is much easier to manage. Okay. Well, and plus I have carpal tunnel, so how y'all talk <laughs> with some people, it helps. <laughs> So uh, this is flown by. We uh, we do have to do our, our amazing giveaway. And before we go there, I wanted uh, Griselda to tell us what's going to be. She is the one who selected what's in this basket. So you know it's going to be awesome, just to start with. All right, folks. Uh, what I ended up picking out was some of the things I talked about today. Um, most definitely what grows together goes together. So you are going to get um, Pyrenees Rabi, Osa Arati, uh, Reverie Starch and Tall, really nice bloomy rind. Um, the Stoa, which was that Pyrenees cheese that is a goat sheep mix, uh, along with some Jabon de Bayon, um, the black cherry comfit jam, um, the Pacific Pickle Works Asparagusto, the pickle uh, asparagus I was mentioning. You're going to love that. And a box of Murray sea salt crackers. Sweet. That, is, that as, sounds good. <laughs> use uh, asparagus over there. That looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring some down for you. Thank you. So um, we are going to do a drawing, but before we uh, before we go off to that, before we spin the magic wheel, um, I just want to remind you all that you are going to get a survey. Uh, uh, probably tomorrow, and we would love to to have your thoughts on this. We absolutely loved having Griselda and Chef Damien do this, and of course Alexia. So, um, and Stephanie's Stephanie Curley is in France, so she's already living the life. Anyway, um, <laughs> so if you guys want to say goodbye to our our uh, attendees, that would be great. And then I'm going to spin the wheel. Yeah, I can start. Thank you all for joining us today. I really hope you enjoy <laughs> the presentation and uh, thank you for participating. And I want to thank Alexia yeah. for inviting <laughs> me and thank Chef you. Damien, I'm enjoying, I enjoy listening to you and everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for hanging up with me over in my little tirades. <laughs> but have a good day, y'all. <laughs> thank you all for joining us today. This was awesome. Um, thanks for get, letting me run and talk about uh one of my favorite hams here and thank you Griselda and Alexia it's great to see y'all and um Stephanie and everybody um and it was just fun and hope you guys really bring this product in and get to enjoy it as much as we all do <laughs> fabulous thank you so much so I think Monica you're gonna bring up a a wheel right I've never we've never I've never done this part of it so here we go spin the wheel here we go. Oh. 
And, and by the way, you, we all have to say thank you to Monica because she entered all these names. So Sarah Feldman is the grand winner. Woohoo! So let's all meet at Sarah Feldman's house, okay? No. Perfect. <laughs> thank you all for coming. I can't wait to see you all. And uh, Damien, I'm coming to your restaurant as soon as humanly possible. Awesome, we're here. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you all.